In this lab video, I'm going to show you how to run a difference of means test in SPSS. In SPSS, this test is called an independent samples t-test. As an example, I will be using the world data set. I will use debt as the dependent variable and oil as the independent variable. I will divide the data into two groups based on oil. I will compare the mean of debt in low oil producing states, less than 1 million barrels of oil produced per day, and the mean of debt in high oil producing states, 1 million barrels of oil produced per day or more. My null hypothesis will be high oil producing states have the same amount of debt as low oil producing states. My alternative hypothesis will be the mean of debt for high oil producing states will be less than the mean of debt for low oil producing states. I will run a difference of means test to analyze the effect of oil on debt. Since I am working in SPSS, my decision rule for this test will be slightly different. It will be, if SPSS calculated that there is a difference of means the way I expected, either positive or negative, and the significance value for the difference in means is 0.1 or less, I can reject the null hypothesis. I can conclude that the independent variable influences the dependent variable the way I expect. If SPSS calculated that there is not a difference in means the way I expected, either positive or negative, or the significance value for the difference in means is greater than 0.10, I cannot reject the null hypothesis. I cannot conclude that the independent variable influences the dependent variable the way I expect. In order to run the independent samples t-test, you click Analyze, Compare Means, Independent Samples t-test. Put the dependent variable in the test variables box and the independent variable in the grouping variables box. In this case, debt was the dependent variable so I put it in the test variables box. And oil was the independent variable. So I put it in the grouping variables box. Next, you click define groups. There are two ways in which you can define groups. If your independent variable only takes on two categories, such as zero or one, select use specified values and place the values of the variable in the group 1 and group 2 boxes, such as 0 and 1. If you are artificially creating a two-category variable from an integral or ratio level variable, such as creating two groups based on oil, low oil producing and high oil producing, then select cut point. The cut point allows you to divide the data into two groups based on a certain value of the independent variable. In this case, I will type in 1 million, because I want SPSS to create two oil producing groups, one for low oil producing and one for high oil producing. Then click continue, then click OK. The results of your analysis should be in the viewer window. The first table displays the, the descriptive statistics for your dependent variable for each subgroup of the independent variable. The second table displays the results of the difference of means test. The first thing you need to look for is the Levine's test for equality of variances. It tells you which row you should use in this table. If the significance level is greater than 0.05, then you should use the equal variance assumed row. If the significance level is less than 0.05, then you should use the equal variances not assumed row. Since the sig value was greater than 0.05, I will use the equal variances assumed row. Next, the mean difference box tells you if there is a positive difference in means or negative difference in means. In order to know if you expect this to be positive or negative, you have to be aware of how the difference of means test is calculated in SPSS. When SPSS calculates a difference of means, it takes the mean of the top category here in the group statistics box 
and subtracts the category, the bottom category mean from it here and tells you the result of the calculation in the mean difference box in the independent sample t-test table. Your alternative hypothesis should tell you whether you expect this mean difference in this box to be positive or negative. You should expect the mean difference to be positive if you think the mean from the top category in the group statistics box should be greater than the mean in the bottom category in the group statistics box. You should expect the mean difference to be negative if you think the mean from the top category in the group statistics box should be less than the mean in the bottom category in the group statistics box. Recall that from my alternative hypothesis, I expect that the mean of debt for high oil producing states here, okay, the mean here, should be less than the mean of debt for low, low oil producing states here. So I expect the difference of means that SPSS calculates to be negative because I expect that it should be subtracting a larger number from a smaller number, which should produce a negative number. Just to give you an illustration, imagine the mean of high oil producing states was 5 and the mean of low oil producing states was 10. SBSS is going to calculate 5 minus 10, which is negative 5. So based on my alternative hypothesis, I expect this value to be negative. Now on to interpreting the test. If you expect there to be a positive difference in means, and this value is positive, or if you expect there to be a negative difference in means, and this value is negative, then you should examine the SIG two-tailed box. The SIG two-tailed test tells you if the difference is significant. If the SIG value is less than 0.1, then the difference is significant. If there is a difference in means, you can reject a null hypothesis, you have support for your alternative hypothesis. If one of the following conditions are met, your results are not significant, you cannot reject the null hypothesis, and you do not have support for your alternative hypothesis. If you expect there to be a positive difference in means, and this value is negative, or if you expect there to be a negative difference in means, and this value is positive, or if the sig value is greater than 0.10, that means you do not have significant results. You cannot reject the null hypothesis. Applying these steps to our example, I expected there to be a negative difference in means. This box here indicates that there is a negative difference in means. Moving on, the sig two-tailed value here was 0 .003. 0 .003 is less than 0 .10, so the results are significant. I can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that high oil-producing states have less debt on average than low oil-producing states do.